Welcome to this web lecture on the Danzig Falkerson Johnson formulation of the traveling salesperson problem. Previously, we were looking into the TSP using other formulations, for example, the Militech Assemblen formulation. But this formulation is sometimes not ideal, and which means that we're just looking into alternative formulations to understand when one formulation is better than another. So within this example, we were looking into the Miller family. The Miller family really wants to go to the zoo and their kids actually mentioned a list of nine animals that they would really like to see. And the Miller parents are now trying to find the shortest tour to visit all animals exactly once, hoping that their kids don't have to walk that, that much and that they eventually also make it back out of the zoo. So, what we're trying to do is we're trying to mathematically model the so-called traveling salesperson problem and the TSP has to visit all customers exactly once while minimizing travel time or travel distance or travel costs. And that is the total duration from start location until returning there. As such, we're looking for a Hamiltonian cycle with minimum length. So what we're going to do is we're going to look into the recipe for formulations and then we're going to develop the mathematical formulation for this uh, TSP using the danzig falkerson johnson formulation. So we're identifying sets, parameters, decision variables and we're going to formulate constraints and we're going to formulate the objective function. So the sets, that is actually relatively simple and that's also the same as with the MTZ formulation. So this is just the animal enclosures. Also the parameters and the decision variables don't actually differ from the MTZ formulation. So we just have costs for moving from one location to another. And as a decision variable, we have whether we move from one location to another. Also, if we look into the constraints and the objective function, they're very similar to the MTZ formulation. So we still have this basic setup with minimizing costs as the objective function. Then we have flow conservation and visiting every location exactly once. And we also have a domain restriction. So what we additionally have to formulate is the so-called subto elimination constraint. The subto elimination constraint ensures that the entire tour is connected. And the question is now, how do we formulate this? When we looked into the miller tucker zemler formulation, we assigned indices to the individual locations. But now we're actually going to look into subsets of nodes. So in the previous example that we had with those four nodes, a subset of node could, for example, be the nodes 1, 3 and 4. And these nodes 1, 3 and 4 must somehow be connected to the outside world, so to node number 2. And the way that we formulate this is that we say that the number of edges that go into a set or out of a set, so that connect a set S with not S, has to be at least 2. Alternatively, we can also say that the number of arcs that go out has to be at least one, or we can also say that the number of nodes that arc that go in to the set has to be at least one. All of these three formulations achieve exactly the same thing. They are just minimal differences that sometimes work better and sometimes look, uh, work worse. So let's look exemplarily for one of them into how they actually work. So here we have an instance with eight nodes and these eight nodes are actually form two different subsets. One with the nodes one, two, three and four and the other one with five, six, seven and eight. And now if we look into this subset of nodes, so the subset containing the nodes one and three, then what we see is that a number of arcs that leave the subset one and three is exactly one. It's the one that goes from three to four and we're completely fine. However, if we look into this subset of nodes, then the number of arcs that leaves this subset is zero. There's not a single arc active that connects the set one, two, three, four with the set five, six, seven, and eight. And this is why this subtour elimination constraint is now violated. We have one alternative way of formulating this, and this is that each subset must not only be connected to itself. 
So if you think about it, then this means that the number of edges or arcs within a subset has to be the number of nodes within this minus one at most. And this is the one that is slightly more difficult to understand, but it also models exactly the same thing as the previous mathematical models that we've seen. And what you can now do is you can now show that these two completely different DFJ formulations are actually equivalent. So the one where we say that we have to connect every subset with the outside world is actually identical to this one where we say each subset must not be only be connected to itself or must not have too many edges. Those two are equivalent and I would be interested in seeing your solutions why they are equivalent. So for example, let's just look into this one constraint for this subset here. So in this subset here, one, two, three, four, actually we have four active edges within the subset. And since we have four active edges within the subset, this doesn't work. This constraint is violated, which means that uh, this is not a solution to the TSP and we have to continue searching. So let's look into general still into sub two elimination constraints. So the question is how many sub two elimination constraints exist of this type of sub two elimination constraint? So what you can do for that is you can enumerate up all sub to elimination constraints for this very small instance with these four nodes. For full graph, what we already saw is that the MTZ results into n minus one times n minus two sub to elimination constraints. Additionally, what we now uh, going to see is that the FJ results in two to the power of n minus two constraints. And the question is, why is this the case? Why do we have this way higher number for DFJ? Which of course then also leads to the question further down the road, why do we actually use DFJ? And uh, what I would like you to take away from this web lecture is first of all, the mathematical model of the TSP. And with a particular focus on sub to elimination, particularly with the DFG formulation. What I would like you to do is I would like you to list all subtours, general number of subtours, so calculate how many subtours there are. And I would like you to show the equivalence between the two formulations for the DFJ that we saw. And what we're going to look into next is the so-called nearest neighbor heuristic. Thanks.